Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. I am so excited to be speaking to my guest this week. I actually haven't seen or spoken to him in a hot minute. There is so much to discuss and talk about. He is the one heavyweight champion, Arjun Singh Bulla. Arjun, how you doing, my man? I'm good, brother. I'm good. It has been a minute, but I am happy to be here. I appreciate it. You know, I was thinking the last time I think I saw you in person, I think was in Boston when Stipe and Francis fought the first time and you were in town uh, doing some media. And that was January of 2018. That was like like over five years ago, man. It's been crazy how long it's been. Yeah, you know what's crazy? I was actually talking about that fight this morning. I got Jorgen DeCastro. He's in town for my camp. He's a Boston guy. Uh, so we were just talking about that. I'm like, oh, I've been out to Boston for that. And uh, I think DC was fighting on that uh, with Ozdemir as well, right? That's right. That. He was. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, that was a good time. It was, it was a good time in Boston and, and, and we're overdue. So yeah, uh, good to we, connect again. Then. We are overdue and there's so much to talk about. And I want to try and go through everything a little chronologically because I just haven't spoken to you in a long time. And I want to start with May of 2019. You leave the UFC on a winning record. You're three and one and you enter free agency. And and it's still not the norm, let's be honest. It's, it's few and far between how many fighters actually go through the process of becoming a free agent and explore the open market. Can you just take me back to that period of your life in terms of going through that process and fielding all the offers and what ultimately led you to choosing to sign with one championship at that time? Yeah, no, it was one of those things. Yeah, I was uh, I was a free agent. Like you said, we're coming off multiple wins. Um, in my opinion, I, I shouldn't have got caught and I should have been 4-0, but it is what it is. You learn. Um yeah, and free agency was exciting. It was nerve wracking. Um, it was it was a lot of things. Um, but as I was going through it uh, and feeling offers, um, I, I you, you lean on your support system. So you know, I I, I talked to Coach Hav, um, let DC know as well, sort of where my head was at. I had my management, uh, with, who I'm still with, CAA, uh, Markel Martin, who just did uh, Francis's deal, um, and and. You know, I just I just looked at the landscape as well. At that time, they signed DJ, they signed Eddie, they signed Sage. They were making big moves. Um, and it was just, you know, for me, it, it was something that made sense to me. They had, a, they had a plan for me. Hey, you know, this is what we want to do in, the, in, in India, in the Indian market. They have a huge broadcast deal with Star Sports, um, eight, there, which is in 800 million homes. Um, UFC had no plans for India. They told us outright. You know, it's the Middle East, it's Russia, um, and, and that's that's where we're going. So it, it made it made sense for me on a personal level. Um, you know, you fast forward and you look back in, in hindsight, um, and, and you always you know have thoughts about things. But at that time, it was the best decision for me. Um, you know, on, on paper, we had a plan. They were paying accordingly, investing in me, and in that plan. So again, it, it made a lot of sense. Um, and yeah, so, you know, I've got the belt and uh, I just came back from an India tour that we teamed up with Star Sports with the whole cricket, IPL, all that stuff. So things are on track. Obviously, the the um, the pandemic was difficult. I, I think the UFC really led the way around the world on that with their Apex deal and, and uh, Abu Dhabi and stuff. You could never foresee that stuff happening. Um, there were plans to already have, have had a live event on the ground in India. It was happening right before that pandemic hit. So again, those are things I couldn't control and I couldn't foresee. Um, but beyond that, I, I'm just happy to get active again, man. That's that was one of the things that that I, I I'm, I'm an athlete. I've been competing since I was, you know, five, you know, in diapers, and and I like to stay active. So I'm I'm just happy to be, get back out there. Absolutely, you've given me so much there to kind of segue into a noodle on. Let's start with CAA. Combat Sports Division, Markel Martin. I was under the impression that the CAA Combat Sports Division was dissolved. So are you actually still with CAA? And obviously you mentioned Markel Martin, who's kind of gone out on his own now. And he's obviously very notable for leading the way with, with Francis Ngannou. But people forget, you know, he had a relationship with you whilst working at CAA. So what is the nature, the nature of the relationship there with Markel and with CAA? So it's still good with CAA, obviously. Um... But they, they got out of the business in terms of an agency. Um, 
so we had multiple agents, right? Um, everyone was managing different talent. Um, you know, we had um, we had the Shevchenkos. We had uh, who was a, a different agent. We had GSP was with a different agent. All those all those guys. Uh, but I was with Markel. That was my guy. Um, and he had me. He had actually Kevin Lee as well. He ha- he still has Khalil Roundtree. So he had guys that he worked with. Um, and so when they disbanded, everyone's just or, or you had a chance to actually move along as well. But some people stuck with those agents. Um, and I stuck with Markel. That's that's what I ended up doing. And so Markel's still managing me under a different umbrella. Um, but you know, it's it's uh, we've got great relationships with CA, and if we need to lean on them for anything, um, that's out there. As a heavyweight, as a champion, when you see you know what Francis Ngannou has gone through, and he lands this incredible you know history making deal, you know alongside the same manager that that works with you, Markel Martin, as an observer. How do you take that in? How do you absorb that? And and what were your thoughts on everything that he's gone through over the last couple of months? Got a lot of thoughts. You know, that was years in the making. Um, I was even with the UFC when they were, you know, kind of talking. And the, the, the few, a lot of these managers are best friends with Dana or try to be best friends, like a lot of media members, my man. <laughs> and so they don't look at the, the sport, right? They're looking for themselves and they're trying to be best friends and, and – and, and and get deals for themselves and and, and, and that type of thing. Um, whereas CAA was always different. They first of all, our guys got paid on salary, get our our agents. So you're not eating just off the athletes. So that was a huge part of me signing with them. They don't need to sell me out. They don't need to you know uh, do a favor for someone and and that, that might not be my best interest. That type, they get taken care of no matter what by the agency. And so they had a big picture view on the sport. Um, and I like that aspect about it. And that really allowed me to consider this uh, the one deal. Um, and, you know, seeing the plans laid out for Francis for, for many years, uh, obviously there's so many ways contractually. Fighters just don't have say or leverage or fairness. They can extend you so many different ways. They don't have to give you fights and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So it took a long time for him to actually see it through. Um, but he got it done. And that was cool to see, you know, see the fighters get something. See, see, it's always the other, the company's always the A side, right? 99.9% of the time. It was nice to see one of our guys to get it. Um, and, and it was nice to see Nate Diaz do the same thing, to be quite honest with you. Uh, any, any, anytime someone from our side gets it, it brings a smile to my face. Um, and, and to be honest, I can't believe the guys that jumped on it. Like, oh, Francis is fumbling the bag. He's this, he's that. Are you guys crazy? This could celebrate this. This is one of yours. You know what? He fought for this. And he's fighting for his op- his opponents to get paid and other other fighters to get. Well, like, what are you guys talking about? You know? Um, and to be honest, what, what, what bag did he fumble? He's the highest paid heavyweight fighter that's ever been paid, number one. And you consider his boxing, what he could potentially make there. He could be the highest paid MMA fighter of all time. And the only other guy on top of him, if he doesn't get that, is, is Connor, right? So uh, fumbling what? You know what I mean? Um, and, and, more, and, and that was a part of my decision making, to be quite honest with you. Look, I, I understand there's brand value and all that. But when you're getting effed, and I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast, but when, but when, you're, get, when you're taking it, and you know you're taking it, I can't live with that. And that might be my bloodline, uh, you know what I mean? As an immigrant coming over, you know, our, my family and our community dealing with what we have, I, I can't take it. You know, you understand? Like if, if I, someone else is going to treat me in a better manner and is better for me, um, I'd rather take that than, hey, you know, be what? Be more famous to be a part of these three letters but while getting bent over? Like I, that's not me, man. That's not how I roll. So. It was something that made a lot of sense to me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how it worked out with Francis. I was excited about the one talk, you know, and that was a whole coming full circle and Markel's balancing both ends. It was crazy to kind of see all that. Um, but you never know down the line, you know. Uh, it's a two-fight, two- to three-fight deal he has with PFL. Let's see how it plays out. Even while he's there, like, the rest of the industry has to start making moves, whether it's co-promoting, whether it's, allowing guys to pro wrestle, whatever it is. So I'm allowed to pro wrestle. Maybe there's a door open for down the road for something else too. You never say never, I think. 
the biggest thing I think from the Francis Ngannou deal for someone like yourself and just any heavyweight in MMA right now is we know that he's not going to fight for the PFL this year. It'll be in 2024. But the fact that his opponent is going to get a minimum purse of $2 million, that has to have the sirens going across the industry and people trying to figure out how many fights to have left on their contract. Can they figure out a way to co-promote with the PFL to make something happen? Yeah. As someone that is a current champion for one of the major promotions, that's got to be something that you're thinking about, no? Yes and no. Uh, June 23rd, I've got a date. Uh, i got to take care of that. Without that, nothing else. Uh, it's all just talk. Um, so no in terms of that. But if we're you know, just talking, we're sitting on a podcast, yes, definitely. And I think, to be quite fair, I think that 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 two million is if you're in house at PFL. If we're co promoting, we're doing this or that. There's no ceiling to that. I think that's significantly more in terms of myself. There's no other heavyweight on the planet that could bring 800 million eyeballs, star sports to the table, being a champion with that. Um, it would be the most watched fight of all time. You wouldn't be get those eyeballs anywhere else. Um, so, you know, it's it's exciting for sure. Um, you know, I'll, like I said. Jorgen's in town. He's a part of the PFL. And he's like, I already placed a call to race F on the day that happened. He's like, you know, um, he's like, I'll show up. They know I'll show up. I'm not going to just show up for a paycheck. I'm coming to fucking fight and, and win. So it lit a fire into his ass, I'm sure, everybody. You know, actually, one of the things we're talking about today. So I'm like, hey, if he goes to that tournament, to, like, is he waiting for after the tournament the winner faces him? It's like, I'm not sure. Because I'm like, if not, it might be best just to lose the tournament and actually go get that fight. You know, so I don't know how they're going to play it. But, all the, you know, the guys in the PFL are definitely excited and talking about it. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be one of the biggest stories over the next couple of, well, the next 12 months. It's who is going to win the Francis Ngannou lottery because that kind of payday is just unheard of if you're not a champion. Um, so it's something to monitor lottery. for sure. I, I like what DC said. It made MMA real. It's the truth of it. We're not talking, uh, hey, the sport of UFC. Now it's MMA. Guys are making top dollar, not just some money. The absolute best money in the sport got signed outside the UFC. So, and all time, to be quite honest with you. So, um, MMA is real because of that. And I agree with DC. Mm -hmm. So, you've been with the One Championship now for four years. What's that? relationship been like and i've seen you do a bunch of tours in india a lot of pr and marketing for yourself but also on behalf of one championship you mentioned that you were just there in india recently with the ipl what's that relationship been like for you over the last four years um you know it, it started off great i'll be i'll be honest with you great um pandemic hit uh you know a little bit uh difficult i wanted to get out there get my you know get my title shot all that ended up figuring it out um, got it done. Then we had to end contract the free negotiations. And then things like every other company, uh, every other athlete, you know, took a, took a swerve. Um, it was difficult. It was, it was very, very difficult. I like to stay active. I like to compete. Um, but there's obviously a business side to it. And I allowed my management to take the lead on that. I'm like, just, just tell me when it's done. Uh, I'm going to be in the gym, you know, six months pass, year pass. Uh, what the f is going on? Like, get this deal done. So it, that was very that was very challenging and very difficult. Not something I was used to. Uh, I don't like the uncertainty of of knowing, you know, uh, of where things are at. Um, so, you know, there was okay. Hey, if we can't get a deal done, do we do a trade? And and there was, you know, that happening. Okay, maybe it's Sahudo that comes over. That that'll get him happy, and and we do that. Like, figure something out. Um. So it took about six months trying to figure that out with Chatri. Um, and then it took another about six months beyond that to actually get pen to paper with a lawyer and, and, and you know, someone else on his team trying to renegotiate, um, all that stuff. So that was very, very difficult. I was, you know, thinking, okay, hey, next week, next, because that's what my side's telling me. So that was challenging. Then when I actually got going, um, then I got hurt, which happens when you're not active. Right, you, you got to stay active. I'm a big believer in that. Your body stays ready, your mind stays sharp, all those things. So, you know, first surgery I ever had, had to have jump into that my entire career wrestling or MMA. That was challenging. Um, but now, you know, we're we're back on track. I jump on the I'm, I'm throughout all of that. Me and Chatri never talked. There was never anything direct. 
So I was like, you know what? Let me jump on the phone with this guy and just see, like, what the heck is going on? Uh, and we hashed it out, man. Um, you know, he had guys from his side handling things, telling him something that wasn't true. Um, uh, you know, I had guys on my end handling it for me. And essentially, company always wins. That's the way it always, that's the way it always goes. Um, but hopped on the phone. It's been great ever since. We worked it out. It's we got a direct line of communication now. That's why the whole India tour is happening and star and and all of this. Everything I've always wanted is back on track. Um, and I'm excited about the future. What would you say are the biggest differences between what you know fighting for the UFC under Dana White as a promoter and fighting for one championship with Chatri as a promoter? There's similarities and there's differences. Um, you know, one thing I'll say going through everything and, and, and seeing what others go through with Francis and his everybody, one thing I'll say for all fighters, you know, try to stick together because we really have no leverage. End of the day, we all have a piece of paper. No one has to honor anything. You should be quite honest with me. Say you're guaranteed X amount of fights. Okay, hey, if you don't get it, then what? Like, are you going to go to court? There's no, there's nothing to speak. You go to court, athletes still lose. You lose time, you lose money, you're not making it to spend on that court case. You still lose. Or, like, there's nothing to enforce anything in this court. It's all just based on a relationship. It's actually pretty wild, you know? Um, so that's one thing I, I realized. It doesn't matter what promotion anywhere around the world. The sport is the sport. And, and uh, that, that's what it is. It's who you can have the best relationship with, where it can be most win-win for you. And again, for me, it is win-win with one because of the deal with Star, because I am the guy with the gold, and they want to break that market and, and, and have a hero. I'm logically that guy, and I want to be that guy. So it's win-win both ways. Whereas I think with Dana and these guys, they have, you know, they have these deals built in with the ESPNs or, or, or your Abu Dhabi where, okay, you want to do that? It's not win-win. It's, it's the UFC wins. You know what I mean? Like, Okay, if it's not going to be you, it would be that guy. At least for me, there's only one of me. There's only one Indian, one title, one winner. And so so it makes sense for me. That's it's. But with, with, say if it was with the UFC, that wouldn't happen because they don't have a big TV deal. They don't have plans out there. They're not doing nothing out that way, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's a little different. It's, it's, it's you know, and, and again, the differences, you know, one is Asia-based. One's based out of the U.S. There's that. Um, you know, the pay structure is a little different. You know, um, there's that for sure. Um, you know, the, the values are different. Again, you know, Dana will say what Dana's going to say. He might, one day he might say, you know, John Jones is asking for too much money and he better be afraid of Francis. He might, better not go out there two years ago to today where, hey, Francis, doesn't, Francis is scared of him. What the hell are you talking about, man? It's crazy how people forget. So that's Dana for you. Um, but he is a promoter and, and he's doing what he's doing. Whereas I, I think Chakri talks more about just the martial arts aspect of things um, rather than personal attacks, um, that type of thing. Um, you know, those, those are some of the things just got right off the top of my head. I know you weren't as active over the last four years as you would have hoped to have been or would have liked to have been but you did achieve championship status and every fighter wants to be a champion. When you became the one heavyweight champion, did you get the validation that you perhaps were seeking for? For sure. You know, I, I look back at that, right? The last four years, say I stuck with the UFC, say I was kicking ass and winning. I still wouldn't have had a title shot. You're not going to cut the line in front of Steve Pate, DC or John Jones. You know what I mean? Or, or, or Francis. These are the guys they've had it tied up since I've left. You know what? No one's got a crack. The only person that got a crack was Cyril, and that's because of the personal story with with Francis, right? So I feel bad for Curtis Blades. He got lost in the shuffle, to be quite honest with you. Um, you know, I feel bad for a lot of these guys that I think were knocking on the door for the last several years. Where you know, I'm happy. I have that. I have that forever. That's a part of my. You can never take that away from me, and that's what I always want, no matter what, to leave my mark. Um, and so, so that's, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm secure, but I'm not satisfied. And, and, and that's why I wanted to stay busy. That's why I wanted to get big fights. That's why I wanted to, that's what drives me as a competition. Um, the legacy for sure. And then the, 
the, the competition and, and the wanting to win for that legacy. Um, and it's been it, that part was frustrating. I'll be quite honest with you, but you know, I think we're back on track now. You know, we got plans for now, um, June 23rd, and we got plans for the next fight already. Uh, I don't want to say it right now, but it, it's going to be a, a big deal as well. One thing I'm curious about um, is how do Indians in India treat you and look at you versus, say, for example, the first, second or third generation India, in, in, you know, Indian from the UK like I am or from Canada like you are or someone from the US. Do, do, is there a different way of how they receive you as someone that obviously you know has Indian DNA running through you, but born and raised in Canada? Well, sure. I think... Um... You know, I think it, it is it, it. First of all, it is different, right? For sure. Let's not let's not debate that. But I think you know, like when I went out there, you know, the, the cricketers and stuff. Little okay, what's this guy about? When I spent time with him, you know, breaking each other's balls and eating together, and this cameras are off, like just us. Hey, this guy, he's like us, man. You know, he's not just some kid from out west that doesn't know nothing about nothing, and he's out here trying to get pictures taken and and, and video and, and this you know promotion. I think when they when they spend time with me, they understand. You know, it, it, it's you could be from India and not fit in as well. You know what I mean? Or, or it, it could be both ways, to be quite honest with you. But you know, I, I'm very cultured and 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 I've stayed in touch with the roots. It's not something I just say. I lived it, man, and I still live it. You know, I know you were dealing with an injury and contractual situations with one championship, and you weren't as active as you would like to have been. You fought twice for them already, but you did also become a family man during this time. What's that been like to become a parent, and, and how has that impacted the choices you make from your professional career, and how do you deal with that work-life balance? Yeah, no, it's, you know, again, that's legacy, right? Um, I want them to be make sure when they grow that, that they know, uh, you know, dad did something. All those times he was away, or he was tired, or this or that, it was for this. So uh, that stays forever for sure. That's motivation for me. Um, I try to be the best dad I can on top of that. I, I'm more than just a fighter, right? Um, my, my wife is incredible. Um, she allows me to fully focus and, 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 and do what I got to do, takes care of the kids, whatever needs to be taken care of around the house um, and, and all that. So she allows me to focus, try to be the best husband I can be. I, I have that mindset. I want to be the best in every aspect. And there's much more to me than just just, just the fighter. I think if I didn't have that and, and I was being iced the way I was, the way things were going, that would have been very difficult. I just lean more on my family and spend time there and, and rather than that that would have been time, time I wouldn't be been able to have with them otherwise. Well, you've teased it a few times and let's get right into it. Anatoly Malakin. Finally, this fight yeah. is going down Friday, June 23rd. And it's been quite the journey just to finally get to this fight. You know, you had your injury and contractor situations to deal with. He went and fought for the interim title. Then he went to fight for the light heavyweight title. For those that don't know, I mean, he's an incredible fighter. 12 and 0, finished all of his opponents. But what's that been like to finally get to this point when where this fight is finally going to go down very, very soon? First of all, that interim titles, I'm in contract negotiations and they introduced this other title. Like, this guy's the biggest, he's a useful idiot is what he is. He doesn't understand how the how the sport works, how the business works. That's leverage. That's what you do in contract negotiations, right? So, anyways, he's walking around thinking he's a real champ. We're going to figure it out and I'm excited for that. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's uh, the belt I have, they have a new belt in the company now. They don't have that belt. We designed a new belt with Toomey and all that. Uh, they didn't have an Amazon Prime deal when I won this belt. So a lot of things have changed. Um, you know, but Anatoly, very dangerous opponent. You got to have that respect for him. Um, like you said, undefeated, stopped everyone, all that stuff. Um, you know, and so so he has uh, potential for, for, for his strengths, absolutely. Um, but we just see huge holes in his game. You know, end of the day, when you're a heavyweight, everyone has power. That's not special. Can you land that power? How are you going to set it up? What, and and those, those aspects of his game, uh, we feel, are still raw. Um, and I can't wait to exploit the holes that we see, which are massive. Um, I like that he, he thinks he's champ. Go ahead. You know, uh, I have no problems with that. Let's go. You know, end of the day, we're going to, we're going to find out. So, uh, I've heard, you know, he's been chirping for a long time. Uh, I've been in multiple training camps for him and just in general while I've been out. So, uh, you know, so Hudo had a bunch of time off. He wasn't able to get it done. Luke Rockhold had a bunch of time off. He wasn't able to get it done. 
John Jones was the only guy able to get it done. I want to be in that in that circle. Uh, I want to get it done, and I believe I will get it done. Um, and it takes someone special to be able to do it. And that challenge for myself to bring out the best in me to do that is is what really excites me. It's not at totally yes. There's this danger, and this is how we're going to win, and all that kind of stuff. But my greatest, why I like to go out there, it's it's a challenge uh, for to be the best version of myself. And I like that inner challenge and that inner push. Be it Anatoly, anyone else, they can't push me harder than I push myself. I want to go see if I can get this done. And, and I believe I can. And I will join, join John Jones in terms of a layoff and still get this thing done. I can't wait. It's been a long time coming. But you've mentioned John Jones there a couple of times. How impressed were you with his heavyweight debut against Cyril Gann? And when you look at Francis Ngannou leaving as a lineal champion. John Jones, the UFC heavyweight champion. You are the one heavyweight champion. How do you think you stack up against both Francis and John Jones? Well, look, I got into this sport. The first camp I ever did at AK with DC was for John Jones 1. That's the first time I walked into that gym and, and was a part of that. So I've been... <coughs> I've been... I've been... had I've had my eyes on John Jones since the moment I, I set foot into this sport. I truly felt, because he'd been talking about coming up to heavyweight since then. I truly felt when I came up and my time came that he would be heavyweight and I'd be fighting him. That's actually one of the reasons I fight in both stances. If you watch my fight with Vera, I'm switching stances. It was for that, because I knew, okay, down the road, we're training for that guy. Um, it, so, you know, it's one of those things. You know, he's he's in the UFC now. Um, he's saying he's got one more fight with Steve Pay, and, 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 and it is what it is. Um, but... I don't think he needed to take those three years off. I think people forget it was a money thing. It wasn't not anything else. Um, he wasn't getting paid, and that's what Dana was saying. Da 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 da. Before he, you know, jumps on him now. Um, so I'm happy he's getting paid. Um, I don't think he needed to take that time off to beat Siragon. I think John Jones at 205 would have beaten Siragon, and that's exactly what he did. <clears throat> the question marks always are: Can you hold that stamina for five rounds? We weren't able to see that. Did he lose certain speed? We weren't able to see that. Now, if Ciro got up off that scramble and they did a couple more scrambles, then we'd be able to see how does he carry that extra weight and and, and how deep. But um, credit to him. You know, it never went there. Um, let's see how, 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 you know, how his next fight goes. Um, and in terms of uh, Francis, you said it. He's a lineal MMA champ. He is that guy. Um, let's see how he looks, too, uh, coming off a knee surgery. Um, you know, uh, does he get the boxing fight he's been looking for? Is it Tyson Fury? Because we're hearing rumbles of of AJ and Wilder. Um, I'm excited to see kind of what happens, you know. On my end, you want to compete. You want to test yourself against the best um, to see what you were capable of. So now that Francis is out of the UFC, you never know what can happen. Um, you know, Jones, he's a slave to the company and, and, and he's screwed. How many fights are you on with this one championship contract? Um, I'm not sure. I have to check it. Um, I, I want to get this fight done. I think I have four or five, something like that. Um, yeah, but uh, but again, you know, I'm allowed to pull wrestle. I'm allowed, you know, they allow me flexibility. Again, if it's win-win for both, um, we're trying to build this sport in India via Star. Um, we want big, exciting matchups, big fights. You know, anything's possible. When you see Francis Ngannou have this ambassador role for a soon to be coming a PFL Africa, have you had that conversation with Chatry to say, hey, look, why don't we almost launch an Indian division of one championship and let me be the promoter, the chairman, the ambassador, something like that? Because let's be honest, notable Indian fighters in MMA are few and far, far between, and you are right at the top of that mountain. So why not use you as a vehicle to grow and expand, expand the brand in, uh, in India? I agree. I agree. June 23rd, we take care of business. We'll have all those conversations. I need to get back there and just let everybody know what's up and uh, doors open beyond that. You also mentioned the opportunity to pro, pro wrestle. I know you have a really good relationship with our mutual friend, Jinder Mahal. Um, so you do want to go down that path? Hey, 
you 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 stole their name, Smack Talk uh, podcast from coming from SmackDown over here. This guy, <laughs> you're a pro wrestling guy yourself. <laughs> um, you see that you see the but, championship uh, belts yeah, right there behind yeah. me. Of course, I am. There I am. Absolutely, I've seen you BT Sport covering some of that. Um, that's awesome. Um, no, it goes hand in hand. And, and look, with Endeavor acquiring them, obviously, you know, corporate heads see the same thing, right? Um, in terms of uh, athletes. I think there's only a select few that can cross over, to be quite honest with you, and especially from the MMA side to pro wrestling. Um, you'll have a little more than, than the other way. Um, yeah, that's something I want to do, Whether be it AEW, who's coming to Wembley in your backyard. They're doing a um, – actually, a, now you're Canadian boy. They're doing a Canadian tour as well, starting in Toronto, Scotiabank, uh, finishing at the Calgary Stampede in Calgary. Um, so they got some big, uh, big things happening as well. So I'm excited on both ends. Um, and you know, more than anything, yes, that is something I want to do. Um, I want to jump in there again, before there was MMA, there was always pro wrestling for us as kids. It was never to be a uh, MMA champ. The guys who had the belts were the guys in the squared circle. So yes, I want to go, I want to go do that. Um, and I want to jump in there and, uh, and again, I'm calling out everybody in the industry, everybody I'm coming for them. Yeah, AEW has a bunch of Indian wrestlers. And obviously in WWE, you got Jinder Mahal and Inda Sher, who just kind of made their main roster debut on Raw. And we've seen so many examples of MMA fighters crossing over to pro wrestling and doing really, really well. Um, and I feel like you would fit perfectly in that world. You get it, you understand it. Um, we even saw DC last year do a special guest referee appearance. So would it be a one-off appearance or would you actually want to go on a legitimate run and hit the road hard like a lot of these pro wrestlers do? Hey, look, I'm open to both. I'm open to both. If, if I got to go in there one-off and show them what's up and, and then they buy in, I'll do that. It doesn't matter. Um, for me, For me, life is about experiences. And that is one I want uh, want to live through and, and cross off my bucket list. I enjoy it. I'm a fan. Um, and I think, like you said, I do really well. Um, yeah, it's. I think I'd be a natural. And, and, and I've had actually people in the industry around me say the same thing. I've run the ropes a little bit myself already. So um, after June 23rd, I, I hope to revisit that. Yeah, I can't wait. June 23rd is, is penciled in my diary. You did mention when we were talking about free agency earlier on. No, I know the the, 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 the main point of that conversation was regarding Francis Ngannou, but you did also mention Nate Diaz. I'm just curious, did you expect his first boxing match to be against Jake Paul? Were you surprised? And, and how do you even think that fight plays out? Um, yes and no. You know, it was tough to uh, understand who he was going to fight. Like, who's out there that made sense for him otherwise? Because he's such a big name and so established. Um, you know, can you name anyone else that would make sense? I don't know, right? I, so it was it was one of those things I was actually curious to see. But, you know, again, you know, Andre Ward speaks highly of both brothers, right? He's brought him in, Bay Area there in Oakland, and he's worked with both of them. Um, so obviously they know how to box. Um, you know, it's the one that makes sense, I guess, that – you know, uh, I'm excited to see it more than anything. Nate won. <laughs> he beat the machine. Good man. Right. Go get paid. Jump in that squared circle and and, and, and go box. Um, you want to do more than that? Go do it. We want to see the McGregor fight, too. That would be fun. McGregor, I think, only has one or two fights on his contract left. Imagine he's a free agent and they do it outside the UFC. You're telling me they wouldn't sell out? They don't need a promotion. They don't need to give their money up to anybody. Why would they? They'll sell out no matter what. If they're smart, they do it on themselves and they do it outside the UFC. If they run their own promotion, that's how they do the rematch. I love it. it. This is so much fun to catch up with the origin. It's been such a long time. I hope we don't wait this long to do it again. Anatoly Malakin, June 23rd. I can't wait. Like I said, it's in my diary. You're going to be defending the one heavyweight championship. The way I like to end all my conversations, Arjun, is on a bit of a light fun note. It's called the bit for social. And there's only one thing I needed to do with you. It's to go with a this or that when it comes to Indian food. So I'm going to rattle off a bunch of options and you need to just give me one answer. All right. First of all, samosa or pakora? Pakora all day. <laughs> I had a feeling that you were going to say that, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> alu prota or chole pature? Alu prota, no doubt. Okay. Butter chicken or tandoori chicken? 
Ooh, now you got me thinking. That really depends on the mood. Um, I'm going to go butter chicken. I'm going to go butter chicken. Okay. Makiki roti or naan? Naan. Garlic. Okay. Saag or dal? On the regular, I go dal. But if we're talking one-off, saag. Okay. And finally, gulab jamun or ras malai? Ras malai. Love it. Arjun, you're the man. Like I said, I cannot wait to see you defend the One Heavyweight Championship again. We can't wait this long in the future to catch up and, and do a show and do a podcast. You've always got my support, as you know. I mean, let's, let's be honest. I'm walking around the streets and people are like, oh, is that the One Heavyweight Champion? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's, that's the other guy. That's the other guy. You're my doppelganger. So I got your back no matter what. You, you know what I'm saying. I appreciate it. Thank you.